on today's show. Hey, we're right here. <laughs> Hi, welcome to Collider Movie Talk. We decided to not do the teases today because there's just too much movie news to get to. And I'll be totally honest with you all. I am just so excited about, well, there's the logo. But we're going to get back to this in a minute because it's been a crazy day here at the studio, to say the least. Now, I haven't been indulging in most of it, but I'm, well, we should welcome our guest first. That's Mark Riley. Hi. You know him. You love him. Thank and from you. all the way across the pond, flying in, from my perspective, just to be here on Movie Talk, the one, the only Miss Claire Lim is joining hey, us. Yeah, Claire. Hey, thank Big. you for having me. Hey. Big show. You are so welcome to be here. Thank nice. you for being back in this office. It's been too long, but I, I am I'm so happy to have you on this side of the pond. And in just about 15 or 20 minutes, we're going to talk more about Claire's excellent new podcast that she has. Mark Riley does a podcast, too. Um, the big <laughs> news today is something no, that's not care. even it's not even in the show rundown I, that's why we didn't even do the teasers i was like look i need to focus on this news is that will smith and martin lawrence got back together to announce that bad boys 3 is officially happening your quick takes on this epic epic sequel trilogy news well this is what i feel i Where's Josh McCuga? <laughs> yeah. Why? I was waiting for him to jump in here. This is unbelievable. Uh, okay, I'll say this. Uh, what took so damn long? It looks like it was Martin Lawrence that was holding out. Uh, they get together. This is great. Who's directing it, though? I still don't remember. Doesn't I matter. was excited for Joe Carnahan when he was originally directing it, but he's on Twitter saying they're using my script, so <laughs> we got that going for us. Which is nice. I don't care who's directing it right now, Claire. I'm just happy to see Martin Lawrence and Will Smith. Do you have an affinity for the Bad Boys franchise? Is it about time that we get a new one? I love all of that. Like that's, I mean, you know, I, I like a, I like an art house film and a proper film. Like, <laughs> well, no, this this is a proper film, but I like you know those kind of films, like you know, like anyone else. But I love Will Smith and Will Smith and Martin Lawrence. In fact, like I'm going to go off on a slight tangent, but it's Will Smith shaped. So, Will Smith, I had these recurring dreams that Will Smith was my dream friend and he was my best friend. And so, this was a number of years ago. And I sometimes when I'm not feeling well, Will Smith like just walks next to me and gives me advice in my dreams. So, I'm feeling Bad Boys 3. Oh my God. That is like such a better answer than I was expecting to get from really either one of y'all. Yeah, that was, that was the best answer on the panel. I mean, I know when you have <laughs> dreams... I die, so it's more, it's more like it, she she wins. <laughs> I've had a number of dreams. Love you, Will Smith. Love you. We'll meet one day. We are best. We will be best friends. I R L. You'll ruffle and all that. Claire sees Will Smith in her dreams, and I see Mark <laughs> Riley fall down an elevator shaft. Really sorry. Yeah, to hear yeah, about your misfortune. I think you um, saw a Friends episode or something <laughs> with uh, Joey Tribbiani. Anybody is wondering how Josh McCuga is doing today? He said that right now he's trying to keep his emotions in check, and he'll be back on Twitter very soon to celebrate the news. <laughs> of Bad Boys for Life officially <laughs> happening. And we move to our first official story today. And Bad Boys isn't the only sequel that got greenlit, announced, confirmed, and that's in the news. We have Gladiator 2. Gladiator 2! Ridley Scott is looking at doing a long-awaited sequel to Gladiator. The first film came out in the year 2000. Russell Crowe played Maximus, won a bunch of awards. Everybody loves it. And it's going to be with the Top Gun Maverick screenwriter. So the screenwriter's name is Peter Craig. He also did The Town, which is fantastic. Mm -hmm. I haven't seen Top Gun 2 yet because they're, they haven't made it but the town's great and Ridley Scott is great he did a great job with Gladiator and so the way that they're saying this story might take place is that Gladiator 2 would follow the son of Lucilla um, who would be Lucius the son of Maximus I guess Right? No, 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 no. He's not the son of Maximus, but he's the nephew of Joaquin Phoenix's character mm -hmm. in there. And so, you know, I, it, Maximus, if you've seen the first movie, you know it's going to be hard to get him in the sequel. But I have a feeling we're going to at least hear Russell Crowe's voice if we get this sequel actually made. So it looks like Paramount is going to be developing the project. Uh, Universal has an opt-in if they want to help co-finance, then get some back end once the movie comes out. And right now, this is all according to deadlines. So they've begun the process forward, Claire Lim. Gladiator 2, Ridley Scott wants to do it. Is this movie actually going to happen? And do you think it should happen? Oh, oh, okay. Oh. Oh, two, two, a double barreled question. <laughs> bye, bye, bye. Like, oh, no, don't hit me with your double barreledness. You can, you, can, you, can, you can phone a friend and ask Will Smith what he thinks of Gladiator 2. If Will's going to visit me tonight and he's yeah. just going to be giving me some advice. Love you, Will. <laughs> um, I loved Gladiator and I can't believe it's making me feel really old. <laughs> it's like yeah. This was 18 years ago. Mm -hmm. I hadn't considered a sequel and I don't really care for it. But if it comes out, I would be very happy 
happy to see what happens with his nephew next. Like, I think that could be quite an interesting story, you know, because it was, for lack of a better word, fuck you up. Like, yeah, what yeah. happened to him? So, sorry, I'm being very Glaswegian. <laughs> um, <laughs> it happens. Everyone's so polite here, so I feel very rough. Uh, you can let it fly. Say nice. whatever. Say whatever you want. Glad it was an R-rated movie. I yeah. just, I kind of feel, you know, I'd like to see a bit of Russell Crowe in, like, flashbacks and things, maybe dream sequences and stuff. Sure. Um, if it happens, I will 100% go to see this film. But if it doesn't, it's not the film I was looking forward to because I think it's such a complete film. It's one of Ridley Scott's best in the last sort of sort of 20 odd years I reckon oh absolutely yeah I mean I, I think it's one of the best that he's ever done mm. and when you look at Ridley Scott Mark Riley yeah he's getting up there in years but he just seems as prolific now as he ever has been I mean I love what he did with The Martian mm. was not a huge fan of Alien Covenant at mm. all but yeah. I think that you go back to this material do you agree with Claire that you'd be up for it but it, it feels like it's found money at this point where if it doesn't happen we'll be okay if it does happen we'll get excited yeah I I, I mean I'm watching this thing actually land with a resounding thud online. Uh, not a lot of people excited for this. I'm kind of, I, I, I'm with them. It's going to depend on the casting, but I got to tell you, there was rumors of this thing for many years. I like the original rumor, which is Maximus comes back to life. And I'm like, yeah, that's bad. That's bad shit. Let's do that one. And that was from Ridley Scott's own mouth. I and believe. that was from Ridley Scott's own mouth. So this one seems like a kind of an obvious sequel take to focus on, you know, 30 years later, whatever it is, and we have the, the nephew. But then, but then, for me, it feels like it can fall into a trap of repeating the same movie in the, in the beats, that mm. he, he grows up and he becomes maybe next in line, and there's another, you know, person, Commodus, that comes along and, you know, puts him as a gladiator. You know, overall, I, I, I'm not seeing it. I'm really not seeing it, especially with... Ridley Scott seems to keep going back to the well with some of these things. Alien Covenant you brought up really just didn't do it for me because he's, he's trying to fit a lot into this mythology of the alien with the android David to set up alien. And now it's like, here we are again, going back to the well, to what? I, 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 mm -hmm. I don't see a movie working like this without Russell Crowe. Like Russell Crowe is what made that movie and the character did pass away in, in such a beautiful way, ends beautifully. To your point, Claire, th that was a perfect movie yeah. that I don't think you need um, a sequel to because, it, uh, you know, you can maybe just make another gladiator, uh, you know, just a bunch of dudes in there fighting to the death, but I'm not really that excited. I don't think we need it, and, I, and what I'm seeing is a lot of people not looking for it to be made. Yeah, well, it, it, it's interesting because you have Lucius, who's the, the nephew of Joaquin Phoenix's character, but is he actually going to be a gladiator? I mean, that, that's a real question. How yeah. does he get into being a gladiator? Is it one of these things like Maximus where it just kind of gets excommunicated and thrown to the side and then eventually makes the comeback? But like what Riley said, that feels so much like the first movie. It doesn't feel that original that you're yeah. calling it Gladiator 2. What you don't want with this movie is to make it Gladiator 2 because you want to get people buying tickets simply because of the name Gladiator. Yeah. But I do believe in Ridley Scott having a story to tell. It's just really a matter of how you sell this to the public. I'm, I was interested to hear Riley say that it's not landing well online. Yeah. Claire, why do you think the biggest reason that most fans may be a little reticent to hear about a Gladiator 2? Is it just that we've been waiting too long for this thing? I think part of the, the answer in that maybe lies within what people think happened next to the characters and what the story might have been. Um, you know, I again, following the same beats, you don't really want that. Because when I think of Gladiator, it's just a perfect film. Um, what I don't want to happen is that the nephew grows up and he's just like, you know, human rights for gladiators. Mm -hmm. And that becomes the most boring movie we've ever yeah. seen. It's like the political gladiator movie. <laughs> and so I just like, because we all know what's happened with the Star Wars stuff, you know, back in the day. Mm -hmm. So I'm just a bit like, you know, avoid the politics. But I don't know, like, as well as that, I don't think, you know, superhero franchises and superhero movies have a real... Oh, really excited, uh, fervorous fan base. Um, and Gladiator has a, a big fan base, but it's not the same. It's just a good movie that people go, that was a great movie. So there's not going to be a kid that was 10 years old that saw this movie that's going to go, yeah, I really want to. That's what I think. I think it's a generational thing as well. Who's going to buy into this movie? Just old people like us. Yeah. No offense. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like I, them. I, we'll like them, actually, like them. Yeah. Um, but like, <laughs> is it just going to be people like us that are curious? I mean, is right. there a fan base for this anymore? But part of me would really like to see Ridley Scott stop 
faffing about with alien stuff because it was good where it was mm. and maybe making some great drama, you know. But, you know, I will watch it. I say this about every movie. I yeah. get down on it and go, but I'll watch it. Oh, yeah, I mean, that's you the know? thing that I, that I would say, even like, like when Han Solo got announced, when that movie got mm. announced, I'm like, look, do I think this is the Star Wars standalone movie to make? No, am I going to go see it? Yeah. Of course I'm going to go see it. Of course I would go see Gladiator 2, especially if Ridley Scott's involved. Now, if Ridley Scott all of a sudden doesn't want to be involved anymore, I think this project dies, but he wants to move forward. It has begun the forward-moving process, so we'll keep you all posted on any more updates we get on Gladiator 2, if we can get a little more detail on what that story in Tales. I think if you're going to do Gladiator 2, the first trailer should be a teaser trailer, and you should have Russell Crowe doing the voiceover just a little bit, just to remind people, hey, remember this movie? This is the guy. Maybe he comes in a dream sequence. Maybe He's buddies like, with Will free Smith. Rights, free rights for gladiators. Yeah. Just like, free rights, human rights for gladiators. Like Will Smith comes to him in dreams. I like, I, I like everything that Claire is writing for Gladiator 2 so far. Well, we move on to uh, Black Mask has been cast. Black Mask is, of course, going to be the villain in the upcoming Birds of Prey movie. A lot of movement on the casting and other things surrounding this film. We talked about it yesterday on the show that it's going to be rated R, and that was confirmed by Kathy Ann, who's directing a script from Christina Hodson. So Ewan McGregor has been announced as the villain. Black Mask in the movie is going to be going after people, and apparently the black, the, the black mask is something that you wear because you're in the false face society in Gotham. So, Mark Riley, there's a bunch of people walking around, and the way you get into the false face society, if you're curious about membership, is yeah. you got to wear a mask, and that's how Black Mask comes to be a bad guy in Gotham. Do you like Ewan McGregor being cast as this? Do you think he can get down dirty and villainous? Yes, I love Ewan McGregor. This, this is exciting because of the casting of Ewan McGregor. Um, I, you know, we've seen him kind of, we, I don't know about villain, like full villain, and that's what gets me excited. We know, him, of course, is Obi-Wan, Mark Renton from Train Spotting, where he does walk a very edgy line, but I, I, this is what I want to see from him. This is, he's having a stellar year. He's going to be a uh, grown up Danny Torrance in the, se- in the Shining sequel. So he's Dr. Sleep. So he's going to be in that. And now this, I mean, I really like that he's getting his hands dirty and he's going to be the villain. And to hear it's going to be R rated, I'm like, okay, they obviously have a story. The director's saying it. So there's a reason for it and not just following a trend like Logan or Deadpool. I mean, maybe they are a little bit, but I like the idea R rating get down and dirty with this DC and you got Ewan McGregor now? Yes. I'm excited for that. Yeah, Claire, since they've had all these big announcements, I haven't really gotten a chance to talk to you about the the movie Birds of Prey and that that's become a front burner priority for everybody at DC and Warner Brothers. The movie comes out February 7th, 2020, so still got about a year and a half until we actually see it, but Ewan McGregor being cast as the villain in an R-rated movie, is that something that gets you out of bed and into the theater? Yeah, I love Ewan McGregor. Like, I think he's absolutely amazing. And I've always thought of, uh, of Ewan McGregor as quite a likeable character in a lot of the films that I've seen um, with Ewan in them, you know, but even when he's played like edgy characters, you kind of root for him. So I kind of, I really am excited to see him play this character. And I love the casting so far, especially Mary um, Elizabeth Winstead. Mm-hmm. I think she's amazing. So good, like from, uh, to see her pl- in Birds of Pre- Prey in a DC movie, it's going to be quite exciting. So I feel like them spending a lot of time on this casting, a lot of time on these announcements and they're playing it quite carefully instead of just boshing it out. Mm. I think this could be good for them because it's, for me personally, just the DCU, the the film version of the DCU comic stuff, I just think it's just been a little patchy for me, Mm. personally. Um, I've gone to see every one of those movies, but I am very excited by Birds of Prey because I love the comics. Mm. So I want to see these characters in real life. All right, so let's take a look at the slate for 2019 into 2020 for DC extended properties and I'm gonna do what I love doing I love dropping panelists at the proverbial movie theater and these are the options you have so I'm gonna tell you all the options you have Great. and then you guys have to choose a movie to go see and you can only see one of them so you got Shazam coming out at the beginning of 2019 guys already 2019 yeah almost Jeez. so you got Shazam coming out and then no more Wonder Woman Wonder Woman 1984 got pushed back to summer of 2020 but right. you do have the Joker movie that could be of interest and then getting into the year after with Birds of Prey. So do you go see Birds of Prey? Do you go see the Joker movie? Or do you go see Shazam 
Claire, when you're on the clock first. <laughs> I was like trying to get into my 2019 <laughs> brain, 2019. Um, I am really excited by the Joker movie. Like, I can't wait for that. I love Joaquin Phoenix so much. That, for me, is the most exciting film. I like that it's not tethered to anything that DC are doing. In fact, I think that they should do something completely different from Marvel, not try and knit things together in a universe. Maybe just have great standalone films that showcase those characters the way they're meant to be showcased. Um, so that's the one I am getting out for bed on, putting my green wig on for, <laughs> purpling it up. I'm there, pinstripe suit. Yep, count me in. Okay, not only is she going to the Joker movie, Mark Riley, she's dressing up in cosplay for the film. That's how excited she is. Are you following Claire into that theater or are you taking Birds of Prey? You taking Shazam? What do you got? God, that's a hard one. I want to see all of them. Uh, th you know, the Joker intrigues me endlessly because of Joaquin Phoenix, but I've seen a number of Jokers right now, so I'm a little, I'm a little tired of Joker. Birds of Prey, though, yeah, that R rating, and uh, yeah, I'm gonna stick with my gut. I'm going Shazam. <gasps> wow. Yeah, okay. I'm going Shazam. I want to see Shazam right now. I want to see what a horror director mm -hmm. and Davis Hamburg does with his sensibilities to lighten it up. Have a character that is, uh, you know, has a lot of mythology behind it. Some magic, some uh, some humor, uh, maybe some DC cameos. TBD on that. Uh, Henry Cavill, don't know. We've heard that. <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> Anyways, I knew you were going to work Henry Cavill into this. I'm going to work Superman somehow. into every freaking movie talk until I get a damn <laughs> Superman movie. He might crack a smile in Shazam as well. Like, he, might he might crack a smile like, in Shazam. Yeah. So, like, because I feel like he's he's been a little bit emo for yeah. me. <laughs> a little too emo. Although I'm, you know, I've actually enjoyed Henry Cavill's run of Superman. I I, I love Cavill, but I, yeah. So the story goes, they were negotiating. That aside, Shazam just has something about it. That trailer really knocked my socks off. I like it. Mm -hmm. So I'll go Shazam, knowing that I can go back the following weekend and see the other movies. Okay, well, good. I mean, Shazam, it's the first one to come out. Seeing some nice love for Shazam on the chat room that I'm looking at right now. You got some love for Birds of Prey. Most people going to see with Claire, the Joker, the Joker movie. I, I'm, I'm probably taking Birds of Prey just because I, no, I, I have no expectations for what that is and just like reading all the casting announcements and, and seeing an R-rated movie. I'm interested in Shazam. Definitely interested in the Joker movie for sure. I think I'm going to Birds of Prey, so I like that. Uh, none of us are going to be friends. We're all going to go to different movies when we go to the movie theater. Well, I want to remind you guys that we have the top 10 horror movies of all time. That list, it's out. You can go watch it right now. We all voted around these collider parts on our favorite horror movies, what we think are the best of the best and now that list is out for your viewing pleasure you can check out two episodes well it's actually three we have the honorable mentions one and then we have numbers 10 through 6 in a bit then we have numbers 5 through 1 that came out yesterday and caused quite a stir <laughs> there some people say debate speaking of horror <laughs> i got to go see john carpenter in concert last night i know and it was epic. I know that uh, our dearly departed friend john schnepp and holly payne used to go uh, i think they went two or three times so I'm at the Palladium. Um, I went with some good friends. Uh, Darina, you guys probably know. She's popped into Collider Live. Haley Fouch, Perry Nemiroff. Some other notables were there. It was just a great show. Open with Escape from New York. Fantastic. It was great. And, and you forget that he did the score for most of these movies, too. Yeah. So he got some love for the thing. Definitely good They Live scene. Oh, yeah. So it was great seeing my boy Rowdy Roddy Piper back up there. And then there was a little bit of Halloween to be had, too. Did you guys do anything special for Halloween? Claire, did you probably just <laughs> sleep after the flight? I arrived on Tuesday. <laughs> Tuesday after power watching Daredevil for nine hours and not allowing my poor husband any sleep. <laughs> so, um, and then I had to do Collider Heroes yesterday. So I went to bed at nine because I'm so rock and roll <laughs> uh, uh, to get a hot date with Will Smith and my dreams. Nice. And I literally just, I watched it, it again, like, because mm -hmm. I had not seen mm -hmm. it in, uh, since I saw it in the cinema and literally fell asleep into the this, this sleepiest slumber and then woke up bright and early at seven. That was my rock and roll evening. Man, that's it. Claire Wim, you say one thing about Claire, she knows how to party. It's just, <laughs> give her a break, she power watched Daredevil and made the flight over. You had no such travel obligation, so I'm sure you went raging last night. Yeah, we raged by eating Tender Greens takeout and watching Interview with the Vampire, which is an underrated Halloween movie. It was a we decided on that one, and that was really fun. So forget how good that movie is. You've seen it, right? Uh, I have seen Interview with the Vampire. I saw it in the theater. was very excited for it. Yeah. I thought it was kind of a snooze fest at the time. Maybe I need to go classic revisit pit. it. Ooh, classic Pitt. Ooh, it's classic Pitt. Pit. And pit. Tom Cruise, top of his game there. Smashes and it. Do not forget really the great, great Christian Slater. Oh, Christian Slater's in it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. 
He's and in it. Sympathy for the Devil uh, by Guns N' Roses. So maybe the song that kind of broke the band's back there. But That's right. Interview the Vampire. I will give it another shot. Thanks to you. Underrated. Uh, Dorian uh, is in the chat room, by the way, and is apparently upset that he didn't get the invite to John Carpenter. You're out of the country. <laughs> for like two weeks. He was living the life in New Zealand, like motion capturing with uh, Rodriguez. Yeah. yeah. So take yeah. that chat and chat away. Yeah, yeah. Where, where was my invite to that, Dorian? <laughs> yeah, you exactly. take me to New Zealand, I will take you to John Carpenter next year. All right, our next story involves Game of Thrones. Hey, Game of Thrones, guys, get ready. The final season is going to be next year on HBO. We don't really have any insight to it, but we do know that behind closed doors, D.B. Weiss and Wenioff, they, okay, so look, this is very cool because David Benioff, D.B. Weiss, they are doing the Game of Thrones for HBO, but one of the Loose pitches that they kicked around doing was that HBO ultimately shot down because HBO wants people to stay at home and subscribe to their service, not go to the theater. Benioff and Weiss did pitch closing out Game of Thrones with three theatrically released films that would serve as a trilogy, a la Lord of the Rings, one of the biggest inspirations for George R. R. Martin. I love this idea. I think HBO had the right play to be like, hey guys, thanks, but no thanks. Let's close it out on our service. However, I do invest in the idea of Benioff and Weiss, hopefully, or maybe somebody else taking the mantle from them and doing Game of Thrones movies. Mm. So we know that they had the conversation mm. and we know the conversation got so far as to even have them consider taking storylines that are in the show and putting them onto the movie screen. Mark Riley, mm. do you think that we're gonna see a Game of Thrones film sooner rather than later? God, that's a good question because they've been casting up now on the prequels. Mm -hmm. I know uh, on the prequel series they have Naomi Watts coming on, um, and I know they cast somebody else. Ooh, that's a good question. Well, first I'll say I would have loved it if it went into theaters as really? a trilogy. Yes, absolutely. See it on the big screen and not on you know the, your, your television set. Okay. I, you can't beat that. You can't beat that. And if you extend the story. However, however they're going to end it out. I don't know if it was going to be, you know, the season we just had where that's, you know, part of a movie and then more of that season and the finale, you know, that's a middle chapter. And then this last season, I, I, I just I can't imagine not wanting to go in the theater and sit there and watch Game of Thrones. That would be incredible. But to your point, I get it. HBO wants those butts in their seat at home paying the service. So. I, I, I think in the end, they have probably more room to, you know, tell their story with episodes because you can fit a lot in like that. And as far as uh, what was the question about the uh, the other thing? Are we getting movies? Are, Are we, we getting, getting get movies? movies? Yeah. I, I don't know. I guess as, as long as HBO owns the rights and they want to keep making these things, to your point, it, they don't they don't want people going out in the movie theaters. So maybe not. But then again, we had Entourage. We had Sex and the City hit theaters. Sex and the City did very well. The second one stunk. And Entourage was, eh, you know, it's fine. <laughs> I mean, I do wonder how a Game of Thrones movie that is more standalone from what we know from the series, if that's released in movie theaters, I wonder how that does. Because, Claire, let's be honest. If they made these movies, the trilogy of movies that were closing out the final season and released them in theaters, that is huge business. That's like blockbuster, $100 million opening weekend kind of stuff. Do you think that it's a wise move for them to make Game of Thrones films that are separate from this after the series ends and release them in theaters. I don't think it would make a difference. Well, if we're talking money-wise, I don't think it would make a difference because you've still got that fandom there. And Game of Thrones is one of the hugest TV shows of the last decade, you mm -hmm. know, it's so, and I'm surprised that people took to it so much as they did because it's pretty nerdy, you know, it's really nerdy and there's, but there's lots of drama and things in there. I'm, I'm going to be the dark to your light sure. and say, <laughs> no, I don't want to see any films. <laughs> I'm just kind of like, you know what? I would go see, I, again, I would go and see these films fine. Um, but I really like watching them on my TV in that episodic form. Like that, that's the way I like to watch them. However, if there were films, oh my God, it would be like the biggest event because mm. there's so many people around the world that jump on this. I, I interviewed one of the um, 
Gemma Whelan who plays Yara Greyjoy a while ago we played Shag Marry Feed to the Dragons that was an <laughs> interesting interview and she was very she was really horny she was extremely horny just like her character um, she, she was like she's like I'm, I'm going to shag him and I'll shag him and I'll shag her and I'll shag him as well oh, nice. um, but anyway to come back to that point um, that then I put that out there like the fandom you know you've got like it's, it's like it's just as big as the superhero universe anything else um, so yeah, I'm not bothered by it, uh, but will I go see it? It's just going to be my catchphrase for everything. Yeah, go see it. Yeah. yeah, of course. Yeah. I think they did the right thing by by not doing this in theaters for the final season, but I think without a doubt you're going to see Game of Thrones get to theaters eventually. Probably not with the prequels. If they're already working on that series, that's going to be its own thing too, but there's just so many stories that you could tell in Game of Thrones and the brand. I mean, you talk about Gladiator 2 and whether that brand still has name recognition power to get people into theaters. Game of Thrones certainly does. You just imagine Imagine a full theater and the crowd going nuts when they hear the Game of Thrones music. It's a viable option to go to the movie theater. I'm not sure when the last season comes out. I think I still have to catch up on the previous season. It's I'm one next, of those people. I think it's summer next year. Yeah. Summer next 2019, year. 2019, yeah. Right. Let me ask you a question, Mark Ellis. Hit me. Uh, it's not how we do things on the show. But, I know. Um, I'm, I'm changing it. Uh, getting a little if, nervous. If, the, if we follow the HBO rules. Yeah. What they've done in the past with Entourage and Sex of the City. Mm-hmm. A movie, Game of Thrones that is a sequel to the series that's gonna end this summer. So it takes place after, whatever it is, maybe a few years later. I could see them doing that. Is, is, that, is that the direction that you guys would want them to take it? Is like it picks up from the end of the series? Or do you think it should be just a total standalone, different time period entirely? What's the call? You guys are the executives. I think it would be clever maybe to bring in new fans. It'd be clever to do standalone because people would go in knowing, hey, I don't have to be like a pure mega dork right. over Game of Thrones, That's, which is fine. Didn't have to see the previous series. There's like eight seasons. That's yeah. a lot. I so, want to see just some whatever, right? Exactly. I can just go in and slip in and watch this. Yeah. Uh, but personally, from a Game of Thrones fan point, I would prefer to see it pick off from where we ended, right. more so than prequels. Because I don't know, like I don't want to live in the past world. Mm-hmm. I want the ghost of Christmas future, not the ghost of Christmas past. Mm-hmm. So I, I am more into that. But yeah, standalone, fine. Yeah, get the new fans in. Like it just increases the dark fan vibes. So I'm like, all about that. I'm all about that all the time. All right, you see, kids, that's how you host a show. The panel's ask you a question. You just turn it right back, (laughs) throw it in their face. I don't even think I answered your question. Yeah, I'd like to see it pick up. I think it's a smart move business-wise to pick up from the final season if you can lock in at least a few of the actors that survive whatever the events of the final season are going to be. Yeah. So just imagine. I think that's the one thing that they really wanted to to hit down with HBO, whether it's going to be on TV or whether they're going to release them in theaters, is that they they had budgetary concerns. They want to make sure that HBO is getting giving them the budget necessary to do the final season the way they want, to make the dragons look fantastic, have huge epic battle scenes. HBO assured them that don't worry, you're going to get all the money you need. We're just going to do it on TV the way we always have done. Will that be the case after the final season? I smell it going to the multiplex. Of course, maybe people aren't even going to movie theaters in five years. So what the hell do we know? (laughs) Let's stop prognosticating that. And let's look at some pictures, Adam. Let's get to Jessica Chastain playing Eve. And we have the first image from Eve. Man, she has had a day. Eve is an assassin on the run from her former employers. Jessica Chastain not only starring in it, I believe she's producing the film as well. And this is uh, directed by Tate Taylor, who did The Girl on the Train. Uh, Okay, it's Uh. a script from the Who We Are Now writer Matthew Newton. Got to do more research on what that is, but I love Jessica Chastain. I think she's great in a role like this, kicking ass. Looks like she's been on the receiving end of an ass kicking, but I'm sure she's going to get it back by the end of the movie. They're currently shopping for a distributor. Movies already make being made. Obviously, we have the picture. Claire Wim, Jessica Chastain, bloody face. <laughs> Does it get you in the theater? I love Jessica Chastain. I think she's really great, and I think she's an actress. I mean, I've seen her like do a range of things, but I know I I am really intrigued by this because I've watched Jessica Chastain mostly in sort of like you know, a couple uh, like horror, you know, a couple of dramas. I want to see her kick some serious arse like really go for it and batter the shit out of people that's what I want to see <laughs> Chastain battering the crap out of people um, and I love the fact that she's in the next It movie right so yeah, she, yeah I mean that's really exciting as well um, the girl on the train c- connection not 
feeling that so much. Yeah. I read the entire book because it, it was a pure page turner. Um, and I actually did, I did quite like the book. It's not really my style usually. I quite like, you know, depressing Chuck Palahniuk type things. <laughs> um, but um, The Girl on the Train I'm was with fun. You. Yeah, I'm all about Chuck. like, you know, sort of like the, the male psyche and, and being dark and emo-y. Um, <laughs> but yeah, The Girl on the Train, I thought the book was great. But yeah, I'm, I'm not really feeling this. This well, he also, to be really? fair to Tate Terry, he also directed The Help, which was, you know, an Oscar yeah. uh, winning movie. And yeah. he also did Get On Up, the, the James Brown story, which I like too. Mm-hmm. So, you know, Tate Terry, he's got some ability. And Jessica Chastain producing, calling the shots, starring in the movie. That's what's getting me yeah. on board with this film. Even I love the idea. I'm always up for an assassin on the run, Mark Riley. And they're being chased by, wouldn't you know it, their former employers. If you're an assassin, you just can't trust anybody. No, you can't. And uh, to your point as well, yeah, the fact that she's producing this thing then most likely reached out to taylor because of her connection with the help so i think she has a lot of faith in that director mm-hmm. um she's loves the material wants to do this and the image looks great because mm-hmm. it looks like yeah she just went through hell and back and i like seeing i like seeing i love seeing her just been like what like this is one of those images when they release an image where they go yeah here's your first look and it's just you know kind of a close-up and you're like Sure, great. This actually tells a little bit of a story. She looks you know? haunted. You know, yeah. she looks a bit haunted. She looks Something's haunted. Happened. Yeah, something happened to mm. her. I don't know if that's her blood or somebody else's blood. You know, this she is like she's just trying to get her thoughts. She looks like she's in concussion protocol in the NFL. Like yeah. you just you just got hit, and we get the smelling salts out. Cheska, you need the blue tent on the sideline, yeah, right? So uh, this is great. Yeah, yeah. All the reasons I listed. The fact that Jessica Chastain has so much passion for this, obviously, in producing it. I want to see this movie. Yeah, uh, it's got a great cast too. Colin Farrell is going to oh, be joining yes. Jessica Chastain. John Malkovich, I believe, is in the movie. Uh, Joan Chen, Comet, and get this, Gina Davis. I want to see the long kiss, good night style. Oh, yeah. Gina Davis. Her, maybe she's she's with Jessica Chastain. Maybe she's the employer going against Jessica Chastain. I I'm looking forward to seeing Gina Davis in this movie as much as I am anybody else. Eve, not sure when it's going to be released, but we'll let you know because that's what we do here at Collider Movie Talk. Ooh. Well, we have one more story to get to, then we're going to take your live. Twitter Twitter questions. Go ahead and start tweeting us right now at Collider Video. Use the hashtag Collider Movie Talk. And Claire Lim, I promise when I tell you this, our last story, you are not dreaming. You're in fact awake and you are going to be talking about a Will Smith movie. It's an animated oh, yeah. movie. I thought Will you were going to say, and we've got Will Smith in the studio. Wouldn't that be amazing oh. if he came through the curtain? Come on out, Will. <laughs> yeah, let's get him in here. Uh, Will Smith, everyone. Oh He's my God, What if him friend. and Martin Lawrence came here to just like hang out and be like, no, bad boys for life, and Makuga missed it. That <laughs> would, oh, I'd feel so bad for that little guy who <laughs> screams very loud when he plays horror VR games. So <laughs> Spies in Disguise is the name of the movie. We've got a trailer for it today. Will Smith is the super spy, and he's kind of a, it, it's an interesting comedy because he gets turned into a pigeon. So accidentally, the scientist who's voiced by Tom Holland, Walter Beckett, turns Will Smith, super spy, into a pigeon. I imagine that's pretty actually beneficial if you're a spy. You yeah. know, I mean, pigeons have been used yeah. in wartime to be spies. So imagine it fits right in. Mark Riley. I was shocked how much I love this trailer. Yeah. I really like this trailer. I just, I like the animation. I like how suave and cool he is. How he's just like, it sets up. He's going over everything. And then, yeah. I laughed. He turns into a freaking pigeon, and he can <laughs> see his ass. And I was all about it. <laughs> I was. I just. It, it, Will Smith just is making me laugh. He's like, I can see you, and I can see my ass. And I was like, This is great. This. This is great. Um, yeah, I was surprised. I love Tom Holland. I think he's a, he's a great kid, great actor. You put these two together. Uh, who's the studio? Is it Blue Sky Animation? Uh, Blue Sky. It, yeah, yeah, it looks like it. So I, I think that's. It looks like a lot of fun. And I like it when those animated movies kind of come out of nowhere. Maybe there's a little bit, bit of heart in it. Maybe there's a little bit of something for the adults to like. Uh, Claire's looking at it, though, like you had that face. Like, that doesn't <laughs> look like my Will Smith. Uh, no, no, he's never appeared as a pigeon to yeah. me. So get, get on it, dream, dream friend. Hashtag, yeah. in my dreams, Will Smith. Um, I, I really, you can't be pissed off or angry or negative about this film it's so yeah. much fun and Looks Will Smith's so great and I love the cast Karen Gillan, Rashida Jones I'm really really up for this mm-hmm. so yeah. and like you know for a time Will Smith didn't go away entirely but he went, he went quiet and now we're seeing Will Smith kind of come back and do his Will Smith thing mm-hmm. and we all know what that means I don't even have to explain it so yeah I'm up for it let's bring it on I'm looking forward to next year yeah, it's going to be a fun year and we're going to have some fun in the studio tomorrow because movie review talk 
Talk is back with an all-new episode. A lot of movies coming out in theaters this weekend. They're going to run you through all of them, what they thought. The expert panel hosted by the one, the only, the very energetic Mr. Scott Mance. We also have a schmodown dropping. And the weekend show, Mailbag. Perry Nemiroff takes your questions. You can write her at any time. She'll answer some of them on Saturday, some of them on Sunday. And you can also find Mailbag on the Movie Talk podcast. So this is also a podcast. If you're listening to us, we appreciate it. My voice, I hope, soothes you. So you get Movie Talk, you get Afterthoughts, and you get Mailbag. Speaking of podcasts, Claire Lim, will you tease it at the top of the show? You have a brand new podcast endeavor that you recently launched. I was lucky enough to be one of the probably the least notable guests in the <laughs> roster that you have. Tell us a little bit about the show and what it's called. So the podcast is called uh, Real Imagined Futures. The podcast where we imagine, I'm about to go into presenter, the podcast where we imagine what happened to famous movie characters when their stories ended. Um, and it's so much Love fun. That. We've had Sean Gunn from Guardians of the Galaxy, SNL legend Lorraine Newman, that's coming out. Katie Sackhoff and she talked about the devil's advocate because that, so that got quite heavy and then surreal and we're only referring to uh, the devil as Pacino devil now uh, because of that conversation uh, Mark you were on the show as well doing Point Break oh Ooh. I got to talk Point Break and just imagining what the future held for all of the Point Break characters I knew it was going to be fun it was uh, talking with Claire talking with Holly Payne I didn't know it'd be that much fun. And as soon as it ended, I was actually upset when it ended. You guys know me. As soon as I'm done here, probably taking a nap. But I could have <laughs> talked about what would happen to the characters in Point Break all day long. And you do a great job with Holly running the ship. It was so, so fun. And it, the, each episode comes out on a Monday. Um, they are surreal and absurd. And you know, I can't give too much away. Just go subscribe on iTunes, Spotify. Um, you know, go in, or follow me on Twitter and you can get it there. But it's so much fun. Uh, we just started recording for season two. We've got some very good guests on for season two. I can't say right now who they are, but they're very good and I'm so excited. Nice. Real Imagine Futures ladies and gentlemen, check out the podcast right now. Mark Riley, you also do a podcast called the Riley Roundtable yeah. and you had a interesting guest this week, a guest that has just been, it's just been a spoiler riches for this guest hmm. recently hmm. with all of his Various Boston sports teams yeah. just winning championship after championship. Does Jared Habon ever get sick of all the success that his sports teams have achieved? No, no. As I learned on the Riley Roundtable, I do a cold <laughs> open, and he was very excited to talk about the Red Sox beating the Dodgers. Did he just start chanting Yankees suck as soon as you started? I mean, he <laughs> pretty much. I mean, he just went into it. And uh, But, yeah, he's, he's a good guy. That was a fun conversation. Went it all about his time on The Bachelorette and how he met his fiance. And then we compared notes, wedding planning, and then we geeked out about Superman and what, uh, what they can do to get Superman back in the DCEU. Very good. Well, good check stuff. out the Riley Roundtable and Real Imagine Futures. I don't have a podcast because, again, naps. So we're going to move on to live Twitter questions. And boy, do you guys have some good one for our final episode of this week. Don't worry, we'll be back Monday through Thursday next week. Um, I like this one kicking us off, and I'm going to extend all my, my sympathies out there to Matthew Spencer because he says due to his current situation, he wants to know what our favorite movie workplace environments are. So Matthew Spencer Stuck at work right now. I don't know what if he's if he's working on a on a job site. I don't know if he's an architect. I don't know if he's working in an office. But he wants to know our favorite movie workplace environment or set. He always liked Die Hard. He likes Die Hard. I guess he likes the Nakatomi Plaza. The fact they're all working in an office before that oh. office Christmas party gets taken over. Because yes, I agree with Matthew Spencer. Die Hard is not only a Christmas movie. It is the Christmas movie. Mm -hmm. So Die Hard's a good one. When I think offices and movies, mm. I immediately go to Office Space, yes. one of the all-time great comedies that is just so, it just, it never stops being relevant. Claire Lim, Mark Riley, mm. any movie workplaces you guys want to give a shout out to that you particularly enjoyed? Oh, you go first, Mark. All right, I got one. It's a toughie to kick off. It's, it's a good one. I'm going with Clerks. I'm going. Uh, Ooh, good play. You're 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 in the uh, the the the, the S Mart, and uh, you have access as Dante did occasionally, and and his friend Randall. All that food, you know. You're hungry. You're talking about Return of the Jedi. You go over. You grab some Twinkies. Maybe you grab a, a Diet Coke or whatever your poison is. You have the access. You just got to pay it back or not, like the clerks do. So. <laughs> I'll go with clerks. It's like a fun place to work. Yeah, yeah. I, I could go for uh, for that gig at the video store. Sure. Like, is it Randall, right? Yeah, Randall. Yeah. Okay. Claire Lim? I have two, because I'm thinking quite literally just like 
just what I would like as a person. So first of all, the office and fight club, then stay with me. Mm. Depressing, but I have many bosses I wanted to beat up. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> I saw, I'm, and inside I am a, a, an angry 30 something year old man um, <laughs> <laughs> who dreams about Will Smith. <laughs> that is my life. Um, either that or I'm going to go um, Sex in the City because she works from home in Sex in the City. And I love working from home because if I can be in pyjamas, if I could have been in pyjamas today with my cat, I would have done that. Yeah. That's my preferred way. But yeah, it's either angry or sedate. There's mm. no in between. Okay. Uh, just so you know, no no allergies between me and Mark Riley. I don't believe so. No. Bring the bring the cat anytime if the cat can can make the trip a, across the pond. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> maybe slightly miffed. <laughs> yeah. by that. Uh, I'm gonna take. Uh, I think I'm gonna stick with Office Space, but I do give an honorable mention to Tin Cup. Kevin Costner's golfer. He's just got this cool driving range. He's got like a trailer. Oh. You know, ice cold beer, hanging out with your buddies. What would be better than that? We move on to Brian Nightmare. I get it. Brian Nightmare. Oh, yeah. It's usually Brian Nightmare. Knight, but then for Halloween. It's November 1st, Brian. Get on that change. <laughs> I will chastise you no more because he asked a good question. And maybe Claire is the best person, the most qualified person oh, on the panel no. to answer this. No pressure. Brian says, besides Sean Connery, mm. who is the best actor from Scotland? Is it Ewan McGregor? Is it James McAvoy? Or is it somebody else? Oh, You can God. just do either or with McAvoy slash McGregor. Okay. Oh, I can Ooh. only do either or. I can't choose my own Scottish accent. You can no. You can you can throw in a wild card if you want. Yeah, yeah. right in balance. My wild card is going to be Peter Mullen. He Peter Mullen is so good. I'm so happy he was in Westworld and he didn't change his accent. Mm. Um, I think he's amazing. Um, if you want to be absolutely scared shitless, watch Session Nine, which mm. is a great film. Um, he is so great. And there's also a film he did called Ned's. Um, I have to explain what the word Ned is. A Ned is like a delinquent. So I guess it'd be like a trailer trash person. And no. like, can <laughs> yeah, I, Peter so. Mullen. So I just looked him up because Claire said, Claire said I have no idea who he is. Yeah, Peter like, Mullen. He's the guy from, from Ozark. You've seen Ozark. Oh, yeah, he's yes. in Ozark, Ozark as well. Yeah, yeah of course, I forget. Uh, seen Ozark. The, uh, the, the people, they own all the land, and it, it's him and his wife, and they like they, they have the drug business oh, the, the, in the yeah. Ozark. Weird. Oh, he's yeah. fantastic. He's so great. He's so... Um, he's great in Ozark. He's so... Uh, like He does intense... Um, kind of psychologically intense roles really, really well. Yeah. Uh, if you want to see a side of Scotland that would scare you, the scare, scare the crap out of you, watch Ned's. Okay. If you just want to wet your pants for the night, then watch Session 9. Okay. Uh, but he is so, so great. So I'm going to say Peter Mullen, but um, uh, James McAvoy, I love him. I think okay. Great. All right. So maybe slightly lean towards McAvoy over McGregor. Mark Riley, does that break your Star Wars loving heart? Well, yeah. No, it doesn't because I'm going with McAvoy too because of, of uh, sorry, I almost said glass, split. I thought he was <laughs> phenomenal. He'll That's be in hard, glass too. Don't worry. And he's in choice. glass. They're both so good. They're, they're, yeah. they're both so good. I mean, it's you, McGregor. I want him back. Where's my Obi Wan movie and my <laughs> Superman movie? I'm demanding all of those. Uh, I love the Ewan, but James McAvoy, uh, McAvoy just took it to the next level with his performance in, in Split. It, it really did for me. I was like, that guy's mm. really good. He really owned that whole movie. So I'll go him. Go. Yeah, fantastic. Well, thanks for the question, Brian Nightmare. And this is just off the top of my head because I know so many Scottish actors. I'm looking at, at it. Uh, Alan Cummings, also a oh, Scottish Alan actor. Cummings, He's great. damn good. Uh, Robert Carlyle, Billy yeah. Connolly, hilarious. Billy One of the Connolly's best storytellers you'll ever hear. Begby, I, though. Robert Carlyle yeah. from Trainspotting. He's Come so on. Great. He's, oh great. My God. He's great. I'm going with David Tennant. Because David, David Tennant, Tennant yeah. I did not realize he's Scottish. And again, this is all according to the internet, so it's got to be true. Yeah, I got to, uh, to interview David Tennant uh, because he's doing that HBO show Camping. And so oh, yeah. I, I was chatting with him. He is just the nicest dude. He is so cool. It was the end of the day, and just we had a great conversation. One of the nicest dudes you'll ever meet. Just so good and energetic and just everything that I'm not. So I'm going to give David Tennant the shout-out for the best Scottish actor. And again, it, Brian kicked the question off by saying besides Sean Connery. So we'll keep Sean Connery. Connery. He's on the Mount Rushmore. It's weird to have Mount Rushmore of Scottish actors because Mount Rushmore isn't in Scotland. We should probably move on to our last question and then call it a day what and sure? call it a week. Satyendra Banerjee, one of our best friends here. Oh. Uh, a lot of good Twitter questions. Okay. He's got a great one today. All right. He says, what's a movie that you like to watch after having a bad day? Oh. You had a bad day, long day, trudging in and out of work. You finally get home. What's the movie? you put on oh, that's a really hard question there's literally so 
there's so many movies. It depends what kind of mood you want to be in after the movie. Yeah. Do you want to be in a kind of silly, oh, kind of mood? Or do you want to be in a like, yes, I can do this. <laughs> Fuck you, bad day. Yeah. Um, you know, so it really depends. I'm going to go with uh, a kind of maybe vague answer, but any sort of Keanu Reeves 90s movie for me is like, like point break. We talked about Point oh, Break yeah. on, on the podcast, Real Imagine Futures, tune in. Um, so we've talked about that, and Point Break is amazing speed. Every time yeah. I land in LAX, I look out the window and then look at my husband and go, do, 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 do. Because <laughs> I just want to see like the bus drive past. <laughs> do, 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 do. You see all that traffic going, like, how did the bus get up to that mile per hour in the first place? Yeah. I'm like the only one going, do, 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 do. And everyone's looking at me going, shut up, it's been 10 hours. Um, so yeah, like I, I am going to go, with uh, Keanu Reeves either we'll go with Speed or Point Break because they just pump me up so much I love them so much okay Mark Rowe we're going to get your uh, take in a minute uh, yeah. a lot of the chat room chiming in on this one we got oh, yeah. a Bowfinger Bowfinger um, mm. Justin Rogers saying super bad yeah. Alex Haro saying showgirls so we know where his head's at mm. uh, the Lego <laughs> movie Team America World Police Lock Stock and Two Smoking Barrels and um, Halox Freak says Back to the Future Ooh. that's a pretty perfect movie to put on when you're in any mood much less after having a long day i defer to you sir well there was a lot of comedies in there and so i'm going to implore everyone to go revisit or visit for the first time fletch that's right mm. fletch fletch is one of those movies that i can quote endlessly it makes me laugh it it's something that cheers me up because there it, there's so many quotable lines in that movie and it just it puts a smile on your face because you know it's like Erwin M. Fletcher is having a worse day than I am, and he's going to get through it, and he's going to have a steak sandwich, a Bloody Mary, and a steak sandwich, and he's going to you know, meet some women along the way, and he's going to have visions of playing for the Lakers. It's just one of those movies that I highly recommend. Oh, oh, I just thought of another Yeah, one. yes, you in the back. Okay, Claire, <laughs> get it in before the buzzer. Me, sir, me, sir. Uh, Demolition Man. Demolition Man. Good That's a good call. one. Yeah, okay, Ooh, so Taco that Bell. plus, yeah, Taco Bell. I didn't even know that were not what that was when I was a kid, but I was like, I need to go to Taco Bell. <laughs> One time I, uh, I came home, this was a couple years ago or last night, and I was very hungry, and as I, after I've had a couple pops, Taco Bell, fourth meal seems like a great idea, no, came bro. home, and like if I get Taco Bell, I want to watch like a fun movie like that, like I put on like Avengers or something like that, and I decided to put on Demolition Man, yes. and me and my Taco Bell big box had a great time. <laughs> However, I got to go with, you said comedies. Yeah. So I'm going to go with a movie that doesn't matter what mood I'm in, doesn't matter how I'm feeling. If I put on the 1984 Val Kilmer classic Top Secret, oh. always puts me in a better mood. Claire Lim, have you seen Top Secret? No, Top I've not. Good. You have I homework haven't. for yeah. the next time you come this way. You, you might even be able to catch it before I see you again this weekend. So if you have a chance, I know you got a busy schedule when you're here. Watch, you, there's always time for Top Secret. Am I lying, Mark Riley? You are not lying. You are correct. Uh, I would follow that up. It's a spoof movie, like Airplane, Naked Gun. I, I would say Airplane Brilliant. is would be my version of yours. Mm -hmm. I mean, because that's, air, Airplane, I like, uh, a little bit over Top Secret because yep. Top Secret is it's in the same vein, obviously. But Airplane just makes me cry laughing every time I see it. That's a hard question. Yeah, that, it's, I think we got there. Yeah, we knew we did. Yeah, That's we why did. We, we we love Mr. Banerjee and all of you for watching the show, tweeting us, participating in the live chat, commenting on YouTube after the fact. Do all that stuff. Let us know your take on these days' stories and the entire week's worth of stories. Josh McCougar, if you're watching, congratulations on your team reuniting, and we will see you guys Monday morning for a brand new episode of Quarter Movie Talk. And when I say morning, I mean it's morning for me. So it'll be 4 p.m. PST. <laughs> Mark Riley, where can all the kids find you? Find me at uh, Riley Round on Twitter and Instagram. Post all my stuff up there, including the Riley Roundtable. Thank you. We, Claire, joining us. Claire Lim, thank you so much. Do not be a stranger to this studio, and particularly this show, because I get to host this one. Where can all the kids find you out there? I am We Claire on Twitter, and I'm We Claire here on Instagram and Facebook, because I'm We, I'm Scottish, and I'm there. <laughs> Thank you so much to Claire Lynn for joining us. Mark Riley as well. I'm merely Mark Ellis. Throw it to the wide to say goodbye for today and the week. Have a great weekend, everybody. Be Bye. safe out there. Hey, everybody. Mark Ellis here. Thanks for watching this episode of Collider Movie Talk. You want to watch more? Then click up here or you can click right here for more great content from Collider. And if you haven't subscribed to Collider Video, do so right now and share this vid with your friends. Thanks for watching.